So Huntington's disease is a fatal hereditary neurodegenerative disease. It is caused by a single genetic mutation that you inherit from your parents. And if one of your parents passes away from Huntington's disease, you have a 50-50 chance of carrying the gene yourself. Um, about 30,000 Americans every year live with Huntington's disease. Another 200,000 are living at risk, which means that one of their parents had Huntington's and they may or may not have chosen to be tested. What is unique about Huntington's disease in the rare disease space is that there is a predictive and a diagnostic genetic test so that you can go to a genetic counselor, go through a series of advisory steps to learn um, whether or not you want to really take the courageous move of knowing your genetic status. If you find out that you are a gene positive, you will develop Huntington's disease. And in the nature of predictive death testing, anyone can test after the age of 18, that question of do you want to know if you're going to develop this disease is a significant one and it weighs on the hearts and minds of our community. Because at this point in time, if you find out that you carry the gene and that you're going to develop it at some point in time, develop Huntington's disease, there is no meaningful treatment to slow the progression of the disease. The average onset for someone who carries the Huntington mutation, um, the average symptomatic onset is about the age of 35, which means that you're likely to be in the prime of your life, um, have a family, um, and potentially you know, a good job, really that, that ripe age. And then slowly, you begin to lose your mind and your body. It affects cognition, behavior, and movement. And for everybody, how the disease manifests is a little bit different. So for some folks, it might be mood swings and depression very early on. For others, it might be the inability to hold a coffee cup um, chorea is the hallmark symptom of Huntington's disease, and those are large sweeping movements. Um, very often people with chorea are uh, accused of being drunk because they have a difficult time keeping their balance, walking a straight line. So if the disease onsets at age 35, um, you are likely to be, um, to be passed or be in long-term care within 10 years and then um, to not see your 50th birthday. And um, it's a real challenge for the community right now is whether or not to test, and um, once you do test, how do you uh, lead an active, proactive, and healthy life until such treatments can be developed to stop the disease. People would choose not to be tested because there's nothing that can be done about the disease right now. Um, they're really there are quality of life treatments. Um, you may take Prozac for depression, uh, if you, that's an early symptom for you. There is one Huntington's disease treatment for chorea um, that was approved by the FDA. But again, chorea is a symptom. It's not, um, it doesn't determine the progression of the disease. So it's really challenging um, to uh, face a disease knowing at this point in time there's really no way to stop it. Would you want to know that you're going to be hit by a bus tomorrow? It's really that mentality. Most of the time, um, testing becomes a topic of conversation when families are planning to have children. Because it is hereditary, uh, even if you know you're at risk, the information about whether or not you are gene positive becomes very important if you're going to bring a child into the world. And there are ways to conceive um, children uh, through in vitro, in vitro fertilization and find out um, in vitro if they're um, if that child will have the mutation, and so families can go down that very long process of um, trying to essentially eliminate Huntington's disease from their family um, through planned um, family or family planning. Um, so it's really challenging. Um, right now, only eight to ten percent of Americans choose to be tested predictively, um, and uh, the rest are waiting eagerly for some treatments.